On this episode of China Unscripted, the Trump administration has said it will ban the Chinese super app WeChat. But is banning it a good idea? And is it even possible? Welcome to China Unscripted. I'm Chris Chappell. I'm Jelly Zhang. And I'm Matt Ganesh. A little slow on the uptick there, Shelley. Oh, I was just thinking about how you sounded different in the mic when you were talking in the intro and when you just said hello. Really? Oh, wow. I guess that's the difference of being slightly off axis and slightly on axis. Yeah. Welcome to this episode of uh, Audio Technica <laughs> Unleashed. Uh, now that you know a little bit about microphones and being on axis and off axis, we're here today to talk about WeChat. What is WeChat, Chris? Well, it's it's a little hard to explain because there is no real equivalent in the U.S. or anywhere, really. Uh, it's 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 like a mega app. It's well, it's not be just... like if you had Facebook and Twitter and Venmo and Slack and Grindr? am I missing something? I don't I don't know if there's like a yeah, dating but, function. But actually. but but also it would be like <laughs> there's definitely not a gay dating function. I can say that pretty definitively. <laughs> yes, uh, but it also allows you to like. Like it started out, you could just send messages, right? It's like a messenger, but it expanded into this place where people are doing all sorts of financial transactions on WeChat. A lot of, it's part of China becoming a cashless society. Right. So like when you go to a restaurant to pay for something, you're just scanning your phone. And it's not like quite the same as, as Apple Pay, like because WeChat is more integrated. So uh, it directly links it, to your bank account. But it, yeah, directly. Yeah. So exactly. It directly links to your bank account. You can also use it to do things like buy airplane tickets or buy hotels. And then like ultimately what happens is that all of your if you're a WeChat user, all of your financial transactions are happening through WeChat. Uh, WeChat is also tracking your conversations through the messenger and it's tracking your location through GPS. So WeChat knows a lot about each of its users and their very specific behavior. I remember a few years ago when WeChat first started to get popular with the cashless payments, how um, there would be photos of um, people like, you know, asking for money on the street, like homeless people, and they'd have like the their QR code, <laughs> their oh, WeChat yeah. code so that you could just WeChat them money or, uh, you know, you'd be at like a farmer's market or some kind of like open air market and like everybody takes wechat nobody takes cash and so the issue is like this sounds cool it sounds kind of like some kind of star trek sci-fi super thing that you'd love except the problem is it is essentially glorified spyware for the chinese communist party first of all wechat is owned by a me mega chinese company tencent uh and so by law all of that data that wechat is collecting can go to the chinese government and also, if you think about it, like your whole life is on WeChat, as Matt was saying, the financial transactions. So say in a private messaging group, you say, happy birthday, Dalai Lama, and then suddenly your life is over. Well, I mean, there that's a documented case as our... I know. Yeah, as our cases about, uh, you know, people just making off-color jokes about Xi Jinping or like somebody called Xi Jinping like Xi Baozi, which is like a steamed bun. Uh, Which are delicious. So I don't know why Xi Jinping would be upset about that. Well, you know, that's kind of a nickname for Xi Jinping because he's a little round. He's a little rotund. He needs and... to partake in the Operation Empty Plate. Am I right? Uh, well, <laughs> I think that eating more food is probably not actually what he needs to do. Well, no, he just needs to have the empty plate. He needs to watch the snake diet. Okay. <laughs> Moving back to WeChat, uh, like... Also, Xi Jinping famously ate at the Steam Bun restaurant, you know, when he was doing one of his, like, a man of the people things. I thought we were going back to WeChat, shall I? Uh, but I'm explaining why this person who joked about Xi Jinping calling him, is that going to be a problem? So I'm just explaining. Yeah, you know, we can, we can hear the, the train honking uh, outside of our yeah. very high end studio. We, we cannot cut. Oh, right. We can't cut. So <laughs> anyway... <laughs> This is taking way longer than it should. The point is, that's why she, he, he called Xi Jinping Xi Baozi, and then he was arrested by the police because they can see uh, things that you say on WeChat because the algorithm flags certain things. Uh, and it's it's a very sophisticated uh, like algorithm that is used to kind of come up with these keyword combinations that they know are like 
It's a no very good. good censorship al- yeah. algorithm. Yeah, and top notch. Really is, and probably the best in China, yeah. actually. Uh, and then, so you know, uh, I think like a very uh, poignant example of what WeChat can do is the whole Doctor Li Wenliang, the um, the Chinese doctor who became famous for you know, being a whistleblower about the coronavirus and then died of the coronavirus later. Um, He originally got in trouble for posting uh, about this mysterious disease on a private WeChat group, and then the the police brought him in for a chat. So, you know, they know everything you're doing, and your whole life is on WeChat. So, you know, you you constantly have to self-censor yourself uh, so you don't get in trouble because if you get locked out of your account, which is you know, connected to uh, your, like, ID number and everything, then you can't use your bank, you can't pay for things, you can't, you know, maybe you can't even communicate with your employee employers. It's kind of like the television screen in 1984, only you carry it in your pocket, basically. But so, you know, there's about a billion people using WeChat. It doesn't have that many people in the United States using it, except for... What I'll just simply say is overseas Chinese. Uh, So you have Chinese Americans or Chinese nationals living in the U.S. who use it as a way to communicate with uh, friends and relatives in China. But also a lot of, you know, Chinese diaspora groups use WeChat in the U.S. to communicate with Mm -hmm. each other, too, because, like, everybody's already on it because all of your relatives in China are on it. So then it becomes the default app for, you know, like, even your local Chinese you know, Chinese school or something like that. So, and, and, and not and just that. Even, there's even a, a like, you know, bodegas in New York, you know, the, the, the delis and corner stores that I've seen, you know, in their window, they have a sign like, we take WeChat pay because now the merchants are trying to, you know, accommodate WeChat so they can accommodate uh, the overseas Chinese. Yeah. And, and not just that, but uh, because it is such a big app inside China, that has a big impact on a lot of, U.S. multinational companies who operate in China. A lot of companies do business on WeChat. Yeah, so the potential ban is causing a lot of controversy. I mean, I think it is a thorny issue just because it has become so integrated with Chinese people's lives. And this is only for people who um, come from or uh, mainland China, because in Taiwan, Hong Kong, um, they use different apps. It's not WeChat for them. So... Uh, it's really like a mainland China issue, but there are so many mainland Chinese all around the world that, you know, it is a big deal for, like Chris mentioned, companies, uh, but also, you know, ordinary Chinese people who use it to get the news or talk to your family back home uh, or talk to your family in America or whatever. I've had to explain uh, to relatives why I cannot be on WeChat. Um, I do it in kind of a vague way because I don't want the, my relatives in China to get in trouble for what I do. So, you know, I was just like, I can't use it because of like security issues for work. But like, it's, it's something that like, then they ask, well, can't you, like occasionally they'll just be like, oh, can't you be on WeChat? Because, you know, they, it just, everybody's on it. It's yeah. so convenient. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I think, so what's happening now is that recently the Trump administration had issued an executive order to ban WeChat which would in theory go into effect on September 20th. Uh, But the wording of it was pretty broad so far. So we don't yet know exactly what that would mean. Specifically, it says that the, how the ban will take place or how the ban, uh, the the ban on transactions will take place won't be explained until the ban goes into effect on September 20th. So it is very vague. Yeah. Uh, And so this is also another reason why the potential WeChat ban is causing a lot of controversy. So to help uh, clear it up a little bit for us, we have two experts joining us today to talk about it. And they do not quite see eye to eye on this, so this should be very interesting. One is Zhou Feng Suo, one of the student leaders during the Tiananmen Square student protests in 1989. Uh, At one point, he was number five on uh, on the Chinese Communist Party's most wanted list. Uh, He's now the founder of Humanitarian China, which uh, promotes the rule of law, human rights, and freedom of expression in China. 
We also have joining us Dr. Yang Jian Li, who was also involved in the uh, Tiananmen Square protest. He runs Citizen Power Initiatives for China, which is a group that brings together Chinese rights activists to bring a peaceful transition to democracy in China. So really, it's an honor to have both of you guys on the show. I really respect everything you guys do. So this is this is fantastic. And now I know both of you guys, obviously, you're not fans of the Chinese Communist Party. Dr. Yang, I, I, I know you've been working on a, a lawsuit against WeChat. Uh, first, why don't you tell us a little bit about that and what's going on with that? Okay, thank you. First of all, thank you for having me here. I think this is a very important topic. And as you just mentioned, uh, me, uh, I and uh, my team have been preparing uh, lawsuits against WeChat on behalf of the WeChat use users for a month. And we have uh, uncovered a lot of cases of the violation of the WeChat um, on their um, free speech. Uh, and we know enough. We are not naive about WeChat. And we know, and as everybody does, WeChat is the long arm of the Chinese government in censorship, surveillance, uh, brainwashing, and spying, and, and you name it. It certainly poses a threat to the national security and the privacy of citizens in the United States. So when we first heard the news of the Trump administration's executive order intended to ban uh, WeChat, uh, we certainly understood the impulse behind it. As I said, it does pose a threat to the national security and um, um, uh, privacy of citizens in this country. After we heard this news, we seriously cons uh, consulted our legal team. Uh, we, we are involving a very established uh, law firm. Uh, the lawyer, I, today I will not um, uh, disclose his name because we still in the process of um, uh, a closing internal assessment uh, about whether this law firm will represent us. And at the same time, so we consult uh, technical support about how possible that uh, a social media app such as WeChat can be completely banned even for private communication use. And we come to the uh, realization that this is impossible. If it is, it is impossible unless the US is established something res that resembles the firewall that China is doing. So that cannot square well with the constitution of this country. So in the sense, we realize this is impossible at the same time. When you look at the executive, the executive order, it only says it will ban uh, WeChat but stop short of uh, specifying the concrete actions. And in the executive order, it mentioned transactions, ban transactions with WeChat, but there's no clear definition of transactions. What kind of activity can be legal or not legal? So this is a serious uh, question concerning the first uh, amendment. Uh, so, you know, it's so much so that the citizens of the country care so much about it. And so our realization is this is impossible. We have to recognize this fact. No president in this country, whether it is Trump or Biden or anybody else, is impossible, legally impossible to do. That. So we have to base our planning on that fact. So that's why we have to ask a question. Are there any other effective measures we can use on the part of the government and on the part of the civil society to efficiently counter the influence of WeChat. 
So I think that's what we are thinking. This is where we are standing. Well, great. Thanks for sharing that view. Um, so, uh, Feng Suo, why don't you tell us uh, how you view the WeChat ban? I have been advocating we, WeChat ban for a long time. I was probably the only one to openly talk about this on Twitter. I'm really glad that this president had the courage to implement such a measure. It is unfortunately a must have this project on the firewall. This is a defensive measure of a country under attack. Defending WeChat with the banner of freedom of speech is self-defeating because the fact that you use WeChat, meaning you are joining a, a tool, a group that is obeying a foreign control and bent on censoring people. Every year, you know, there's massacre going on on WeChat. Millions of accounts get wiped out because of talking about my very subject, Tiananmen Massacre, or any other subject, Taiwan, Weaver, Hong Kong, think about that. This is just part of the story. The use of WeChat in America pose a great threat to this country, the freedom. It's not only these people, these users who are willingly cooperate which, with this totalitarian regime. They are endangering the society. This is a tragic horse into this society. That's why it has to be cut off completely, immediately. And to me, I think the worry is this ban is already too late. The fact that all these newspapers, this to me, you know, it's a beautiful new world. This alliance I have never seen before cobbled together under the banner of freedom against banning WeChat. You know, think about it. Wall Street Journal talking about all the multinationals, including Apple, and all the big ones you can think about, Goldman Sachs, MetLife, Walmart, banding together against this measure because of their profit. New York Times defending WeChat as a bridge. And Washington Post came to Yang Jianli for this opinion, saying that it will hurt ordinary people. And the Los Angeles Times having the same piece. This is a very rare event that Wall Street and the liberal media have the same opinion. And that's not the end of it. Of course, on the other side, there is the Chinese government and there are these so-called overseas Chinese who know nothing else than following the will of Beijing. So to me, this, this is a beautiful new world that WeChat is hoping to create. And it has already made such an impact in American life that it has, it's a cancer, it's a growing cancer. It's already too late now. The fact that it could you know, the ban of such a foreign control app, a super app, uh, could cause such you know, a unified opposition. It's just purely beyond me. I must clarify what Yang Jianli wrote on Washington Times represents only himself. The majority of the Chinese dissident community welcome this ban and support Mr. Trump on this. I think what's interesting is fundamentally, both of you are saying WeChat is, you know, they're censoring people and they're also a security threat. Let me, uh, let me respond, okay? Nobody is here to defend WeChat. I began with my comments 
by saying we understand the evils of WeChat. We have been doing the job to uncover the specific cases of violations by WeChat. You know better than everybody else, I think, what we are doing. You know, we are almost ready to file a lawsuit case against WeChat. So I don't intend to represent anybody as some, uh, somebody else always try to represent whole community. This is uh, my personal view. And the fact that so many American citizens have an ambivalent feeling about this executive order tells a lot. So we must understand the citizens of a country care so much about their constitution. This is a democratic way of life. You cannot accuse everybody of defending uh, uh, WeChat or even apologies for the CCP. It is wrong to do that. So the question is why President Trump did not specify the actions he will do about the so-called ban. ban. My understanding is he himself understood if complete ban for the private use of WeChat may not square that with the constitution here. So I repeatedly saying that Feng Suo and anybody uh, who is watching this program, we have to recognize the fact that's impossible. So we have to base on this fact to do our planning. We have a lot of our other measures that are even more effective and more in line with the democratic value. Why not to do that? Why always come up accusing others who have different views with you as defending we WeChat or even apologies for, uh, for the regime? So that's, so we have to recognize the fact. Yeah, there are a lot of measures by the government, by our civil society out there. Why not get into that? Why just talking about, oh, no, you, you are defending WeChat. Who is defending WeChat? Tell me who's defending WeChat. So this kind of a political correctness is about does more harm than you or not. There's no other answer. Okay? This is a national emergency already to me. I have been calling this out for many years that U.S. has been under attack. Chinese Communist Party never had this fact that they want to overtake, overtake the United States. They want to overthrow everything we like we have. And WeChat is one dream too to do that. It's one app that controls all, does all. Tencent, the company, you know, it has thousands of CCP members itself. It's a government agency. It's not a company, a person under US law. And every user, by using it, using it, you sign, you are signing into this machine of censorship. Yeah. You are basically giving up your right to do it, to do that. And then you are accusing people of banning it of violating your own right. That's just so contradictory. It's so obvious to me that if you are willing to accept such censorship, the worst censorship in the world, you know, for your own convenience, at the damage of the society as a whole, and you, you, that's just beyond me. You would defend such under the US constitution. I don't think that's defendable. Well, I think one of the interesting things about this whole issue, as you bring up, is uh, the issue of the First Amendment freedom of speech rights. And this is something I've heard of people talk about when talking about how the Chinese Communist Party wages its unrestricted warfare against the United States, that it uses the freedoms of liberal democracies to undermine 
the freedoms of liberal democracies. So on the one hand, as you say, Jen Lee, we in America, we value the First Amendment, we value freedom of speech. But as Feng Suo said, there are some very serious issues with WeChat, issues you know about. So how can the United States take appropriate steps to battle this existential threat while not allowing the Chinese Communist Party to undermine our freedoms by using our freedoms against us? I, I think this is a valid question, very important question. I think it's the most important question we have to look at. And first of all, I want to say, if there is a, a cold war, if we are going to win, we are not win by censorship. We are not going to win by uh, blockade, but to instead, we, but we are going to win by breaking the firewall, not by erecting firewall itself. And if we remember clearly for the old Cold War between the free world and the Soviet Union, it is the Soviet Union society that always tried to block, block it. And the freedom world side always tried to break. Okay, so that's my comment. We should have such a confidence. This is uh, the uh, first uh, um, uh, uh, statement I want to make. Come to your uh, concrete uh, question, how we can do that. First, I have to repeat myself. Complete ban legally in this country is impossible. Doing it is just to invite lawsuit against itself. So we have to, based on this fact, to find other measures. And there are a lot of things we can do. The administration itself has an array of legal options that we as private parties may not have, uh, including, for example, for example, uh, a Federal Trade Commission investigation and the lawsuit. Uh, and uh, they can have a lawsuit against uh, WeChat. Uh, and as a uh, civil society, private citizens, we are preparing lawsuit and we use this kind of lawsuit. If we win, we will set precedent case for others. If we chat, come up censoring, surveillance, spying, um, then you can do the same thing. And we use this way to behave we chat. If we chat, does not change its behavior, then we continue doing this, their business will end in this country. And uh, another thing I always try to advocate, that is uh, tear down the firewall. And uh, when we say a lot of ordinary, ordinary users uh, using the WeChat, you know, they rely on WeChat. These people, you cannot just blame them for using it. They don't care about the politics. They are a silent uh, majority. You cannot say, oh, you're using it's equal to supporting uh, the CC CCP regime. By saying so, you will alienate the potential supporters, will become ourselves. So we have to care about their well being. And saying that, what I want to say is the question is how we can create alternative to WeChat. If we you know, make effort to tear down the firewall, actually a lot of a group like Falun Gong practitioners and the, the government, even government has a funding for it. If we serious do that, we tear down the firewall, all the social media app will go to, will enter China. Then people will have an alternative. So I think this is a very important measure U.S. have to look at it seriously. And according to my understanding, the technology and resources are existing. What is lacking is political will. So if you really want to ban something, why not just break, break the firewall, then everything will follow from there. So this is uh, the measures I'm suggesting. And another one, just not long ago, the U.S. actually introduced measures to apply travel ban on the high-ranking managerial people for Huawei 
because we engage in some uh, uh, illegal actions, uh, including uh, helping the violate, violation of the human rights. US can legally do the same thing to the high ranking managerial people of WeChat and Tencent. If we have evidence that this uh, manager engaged in uh, violating the human rights of the users, US have every reason to apply travel ban on this person. So I think we have a lot of measures to use. They are more in line with the democratic value. Why we just do something, try to do something which is impossible actually. I can bet it is impossible. No president in this country can actually do it. Uh, why we just take that as a real thing and whoever think that is uh, has a problem, then this is your enemy. I don't like this kind of a sentiment. Well, so Feng Suo, how would you respond to that? I mean, the idea was that the Communist Party uses our freedoms to undermine our freedoms. You want a, a WeChat ban. Do you think that would uh, undermine the freedom of speech of Americans or Chinese overseas in America? versus uh, the idea of uh, taking down the Great Firewall, which I think is a very interesting idea, and I'd like to get back to that in a little bit, too. Definitely, uh, because we are facing an animal uh, that's never seen before. Uh, its uh, ingenuity is beyond uh, any measure in, uh, in history. If we talk about Hitler's Germany, geographically, it was limited. Now, you know, after these years, you know, after Tiananmen massacre for 31 years, American people has been wishfully thinking that globalization and the technology will change. That's why there's engagement policy. That's what uh, I believe you know, uh, from what I got Yang Jianli said. That's completely wrong. That's why this administration has done a great job. You have to change course have to confront it head on. This is a different enemy from the Soviet Union. Let's talk more about WeChat for so-called ordinary people. First, by using WeChat, you are training this very machine on detecting people that, that's different from you. For example, in China, people would not talk about Tiananmen June 4 because it will be automatically censored. And then there's no way to detect an organic sentence that would only come out from some other users outside of China. So by using it, you are training this machine to provide this base for imprisoning Chinese people, over 1 billion of Chinese people while using it. Second, very important, this WeChat is not only for speech. It's one super app that has financial capability beyond any measure. You know, think about the organized protests last year against Hong Kong people. And it's all the yelling, screaming. Behind it, it's all through WeChat. There is funding. There's talk about murder going on. Why it's possible? Because it's protected by Beijing. Knowingly, unknowingly, people in America would be participating in a mafia-like organization and with impunity, because there's no way for US law enforcement to find out what is really going on. I was the target of a death threat because I exposed one gang in Chile who was, who was attacking a Taiwanese restaurant owner because this restaurant owner said something about supporting Hong Kong. And so they were talking about buying someone to kill me. They thought I was in Chile. If all these, could, they could get away with it because they are using WeChat. This is outside of China, and it is a complete black box. So this threat, even 
if you just carry it around, it documents your whereabouts. If you take a picture, it knows where it is. This is providing vast information for the communist government yeah, that is building an identity for everyone in the world for the single purpose of controlling everyone's soul. They aim to be the engineer of human soul. There's not a single person in this world that would be escaped. And WeChat is the most effective tool. That's why I believe it's already too late to do this. Yet look at this so-called engagement, what has produced this common bounty, you know, this machine of profit based on low human rights, slave-like situation, censorship, that's linking media, technology, and the communist government all together in the name of convenience, easiness to use. This is what they want. That's why we have to break this now. To me, banning WeChat is the first effective way to fight back against this firewall. I have always been saying the United States has failed its big companies like Google and Twitter and Facebook to some degree. These companies who are willing to challenge Chinese censorship, they were forced to withdraw. And these companies like Apple, who are willing to kowtow to Beijing, get the billions of profit, becoming part of the machine. That's why you know, this normalization, people just feel like this is part of their life now. That is an insult to all the millions you know, of the people who are imprisoned in China in the concentration camps. And all these accounts, you know, WeChat accounts, being shut down every year. So this, we have to be clear. And by banning this, I think this is the first effective way. This is already a cancer. It has to be surgically removed. Look back, think about all the ways that the United States has been trying. With WeChat could do all its business and commit all kinds of crimes here in the United States with impunity. Whereas Google and Twitter, because of this firewall, are put at a great disadvantage. And the Chinese web force, you know, the militarized web force, could attack and shut down, for example, GitHub. The only way the United States could fight back it's targeting Chinese companies. These are not companies. They are agents of a totalitarian regime. So we cannot treat this as just an ordinary person, ordinary people. This is completely unprecedented. What would you say, uh, Feng Suo, about the issue that's been brought up in some of these articles about how, you know, will Chinese people be able to contact their families in China, et cetera, without WeChat? There are definitely other ways. You know, for now, Signal is not blocked, but uh, I don't think that will last long. Any safe communication will be blocked some way. Uh, you, can, you can call the phone, voice over uh, internet. You know, there are other ways to do that. And we must remember China has weaponized this family relationship. We are all victims. I have families in China. And the only way they would love to see me is on WeChat. I will not be held hostage because of this. This is why it's such a 
the issue now by recognizing the Chinese you know, billion, over a billion people and the overseas Chinese. They're hijacking now the United States society as a whole, you know, just simply because of its widely used. This is not the excuse. Well, and so, Jen Lee, how do you respond to that? If there are safer alternatives than WeChat, uh, why why not ban a, a app that is a clear national security threat, as you admit yourself? Why not just use one of these other applications like Signal? Yes. Um, Feng Suo and everybody else, uh, we must understand uh, we are not lucky enough to have every Chinese uh, is Feng Suo. No, not everyone is a hero. They are just ordinary people. So you just cannot, uh, you know, require them to do what you think you, they should do. And you have uh, no measures to control them. This is the fact we must recognize. It's not everyone is Feng Suo. Okay, this is a fact. And second, Feng Suo, you don't have to tell me the evils um, WeChat is doing and the threat it is posing to national security of this country and the privacy and you know everything else. I don't have to repeat myself, but we got to be practical. We have to find something to do that you know, find something possible to do. You know, of course, we want uh, China's influence to be blocked at the border. But the question, how can you do it? How can you do it? You tell me, how can you do it? You said it's not tear down the firewall and uh, erecting the firewall is tearing the firewall. I don't buy into it. Nobody actually have told me they can effectively, legally ban the private use of WeChat. So this is the whole question. It's not why. We are on the same page. We have to counter the influence of WeChat. We have to counter the influence of CCP. We have been fighting for so many years for that. But we are on the same page. But we have to answer the question how, right? And I have to, I always go back to the old Cold War. Of course, Soviet Union, I mean, China is not Soviet Union. It's even more dangerous and more complicated because we have more interdependence with the, the country, uh, China, with so many people there we love so much. It's so much inter interdependence. And, but I have to mention the old Cold War. The symbol of the old Cold War is the Berlin Wall. Who erected the Berlin Wall? It is not the Freedom War side who did it. It was the Soviet Union. And during all the years, the free war side led by US was trying to do is break, break, tear down the wall. We won, not by erecting wall, but breaking the wall. So we have to have a, such a confidence. And we have to come to the real thing. If one thing is impossible, why you just hold it as something we must do? If you don't agree, you, you will have some uh, problem or either you know, apologize for US or maybe for China, or you're naive, or you, you are defending uh, WeChat. It's not like that. You are holding up something impossible. Let's come to the real thing. There's a lot of things we can do together, which turn out to be even more effective, more in line with the democratic value. We win by democrat, democrat by freedom not by dragging down ourselves to the level of the CCP. Dr. Young, you had mentioned a few times that you think the ban is impossible, but since we won't know what the 
uh, you know, actual stipulations of the ban on transactions is until September 20th. And I'm sure, you know, the Commerce Department has all of their lawyers working on it right now um, to try to figure out what how they will word and all this. What if they came up with a partial ban that is, for example, just a ban on financial transactions using WeChat or something like that? Do you think that would be effective? We are for partial ban. You know, in our articles and uh, other on other occasions, we advocate ban of use of WeChat for the federal employees, military people, even the sensitive technology industry. And we also advise people not to use it. You cannot just impose the ban on the people who want to use it. So this is a different idea. We certainly support a uh, partial ban, uh, WeChat. And we, at the same time, actively working to prepare a lawsuit. And we want to set a legal precedent for all others to follow the suit. If WeChat continue its behavior, then we have a weapon to behave yourself. Otherwise, your business that means the end in US. So that's a very strong signal why we don't think this is an effective way. And U.S. government can do even more than a civil society in this regard. They can come up with a lawsuit. They can uh, punish the, uh, the bad behavior when they do business here. You can apply a travel ban on the uh, managers, uh, managerial people in WeChat or technical people in the WeChat who engaged in spying, for example, on the privacy, private information of a citizen's country, or stealing technology security from this country. Why we just do that? That is legal, reasonable, practical, effective. Wouldn't that just end up in, you know, maybe replacing the people who are actually doing it, but WeChat itself would still be what it is? No, it, it, as I said, we, we our action itself will play a role of deterrence to its behavior. And if we win the case, if the U.S. government come up with a lawsuit against the WeChat and win this case, then we will set up legal precedents. And WeChat, of course, will resist to change its behavior because you, uh, CCP is behind it. But if you continue the behavior, you will meet with lawsuit, more lawsuit. Penalty, penalty, penalty. Then itself, it's not by you, by itself, it will draw from this country. Yeah, so Feng Shuo, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, uh, at least uh, I, I welcome his uh, comments that uh, uh, he is uh, uh, agreeing with a partial ban. I I'm not sure why he's so much against the, the ban no, proposal. You didn't read the article thoroughly. You didn't uh, uh, see listen, my listen, we Twitter. Listen, you didn't see my listen. tweet. No, we, we support a partial ban from the very beginning. Your subject line says, ban in WeChat will hurt ordinary people. And you have better ways. That's your plan. I completely disagree. Okay? That's my argument. I don't want to read because I have been seeing this kind of garbage here on all the newspaper here. That's what distressed me. This country, there's no place for a voice like me. There's no place. There's place of people who are protesting against this ban. This is actually, it's the first time, you know, I'm invited for this forum. I would ask Washington Post to talk to me. Yeah. Why this is important? Because this ban, I must say again, is supported by the majority of the Chinese dissident community and by the political prisoners from China. Make no mistake about it, okay? Why 
because this is the first effective measure by any administration in the last 31 years against this communist regime in fighting back against censorship. This is something to be uh, applauded for. This is not something to fight against. To everybody else, okay? Even no. the prisoners in China. China. Okay. Okay. Uh, hey. Number one, we just talk about our personal view. Nobody wants you to be here, okay? Nobody cast a vote to select you to uh, be their spokesperson here, okay? We have to realize this fact. Okay, my, my argument, listen, listen, my argument, nobody is here to defend WeChat. Okay. We are all That's here to counter WeChat. But my argument, once again, you cannot just uphold the impossible. I tell you repeatedly, what you advocate for is impossible. If you want to bet, I can bet with you. This is my personal view. You, you cannot claim you represent everybody else, okay? So we have to realize the fact. No? Yeah. And I said the majority, okay? Oh, how do you see you have okay. a majority? I don't know. Yo, I we, what, do you, Let's go. what do you mean by majority? What do you mean by majority of a uh, dissident or majority of a Chinese people? All right, guys, let, let me jump in here. I do have a question. I kind of want to. Oh, majority of U.S. citizens. No. Tell me. Tell me what, what. Tell me what. A political prisoner. I think you, you, I don't, have heard you from. don't have to play. You don't have to. You, you don't have to use the Communist Party's uh, playbook to debate, okay? You, CCP always re always represent, always claim to re represent everybody. I don't. No, 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 no. Don't use, don't use CCP's playbook, okay? Okay. You don't represent I, nobody I, but yourself, I, okay? Um, but what I, I want I, to say is, here. what I want to say is, that is impossible. We have to find more effective way, more the the the, the ways more in line with the uh, democratic values. So, Jim Lee, let page. me let me ask you we about that. We are on that. the same page to counter to counter CCP. We are on the same page to counter WeChat. All right, let me just let me just jump in here, cool things down. I don't want to use CCP's playbook in this kind of uh, debate. That is the danger facing us. You know, we are anti-CCP, but many people in our community act like a CCP and use the CCP's playbook and set up a political correctness. Whoever defers, have a different views with that, will be accused. That's the danger facing us. I tell you, Feng Suo, as a friend, as a fellow dissident, that's the danger facing us. Let me tell you, this is an existential threat. There's no middle ground. It's a wall for existence, for the very freedom we love. Okay? I applaud this government for doing the right thing. Oh, so you don't have to tell me this. I to fight against that. And I'm dismayed that you are doing this. Okay? Let's, uh, let's go back to this question, whether that's possible or not. You know, banning Huawei, banning ZTE was considered impossible. Just look at what it gets. And this trade war, so-called, with China. Now China accepts this. Why? Because this system, even today, as it is, is still benefiting this totalitarian regime. So any status quo, we must question. We cannot accept it. It is a well-run machine with efficiency and ingenuity. That's why so many people are hooked to this poison, like WeChat. Some people talk about it like a bridge. It's a drawbridge 
for the bandage. When the bridge is done, it's not for communication. It's for plundering the free world. That's why it has to be burned up immediately. So, Jen Lee, um, I think the question of whether or not this kind of ban is possible is kind of up in the air because we don't know if it is even if the Trump administration is even going to push for a total ban or not. That's something that the U.S. courts will have to decide. I do have a question, though. You 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 have compared a hypothetical total ban of Huawei of of WeChat to the Great Firewall that the Chinese Communist Party has put up. Aren't those very different things, though? I mean, the Chinese Communist Party has a great firewall to completely shut out the outside world. Uh, China blocks Western apps, non-Chinese apps, as a form of anti-competition. The U.S. is doing this for national security issues. So isn't that fundamentally two different things? That's two different things, fundamentally. But the behavior are resembling each other. And uh, I consult technical expert on this before I came up with their article. I consult a legal expert, both legal expert and technical expert. I specifically ask question whether it's possible unless U.S. do something symboling, resembling to firewall. They says no. And, uh, you know, this kind of measure cannot square well with uh, American constitution. That is uh, a consultation I did before we come up with that article. So that's what I want to say. Yes, it's different, but uh, because of a legal environment here, because of the democratic way of life here, that is impossible. We have to find other ways. That's my argument. And uh, if somebody thinks I'm trying to defend CCP or uh, WeChat, please look at my publications. I published both in Chinese and in English. In English, I published both on uh, conservative uh, journals and liberal journals, talking about the nature of this regime, talking about the threat uh, WeChat, Huawei, uh, these companies are posing to the national security of this country and to the violation of free speech um, everywhere who is using them. So just look at that. So I don't think we have that much difference need to be, you know, confront each other in that way. And I don't like accusations. We are on the same page. The only difference is we think you think this is the effective way. I think that is a legal and effective way. That's it. Right? Why just treat each other as enemies? So yeah, that's that's Let, I, yeah. Let me answer that. Okay. Yeah, I I have a track record to show everything. You know, I'm doing lawsuit against WeChat. We will file a lawsuit very soon. I will show what I mean here. So Feng Suo, your response? Uh, I believe uh, banning WeChat is the most effective way uh, uh, in fighting back. Uh, you know, and it will force uh, WeChat to repackage itself, for example, in some way. But even with that, I don't think the United States should be fooled into accepting it in a different form, like a ZTE case. Uh, this is a snake with nine heads. As long as the communist regime in China is in control, there's no individual company that it can behave like a free company. We are dealing directly with CCP's China on every issue confronting these companies. So the only way is to be direct, forceful. And I'm actually concerned that this will not be followed up by the next administration if there's a different president, or even with this president 
whether he has the political will to carry it through. To me, this is must do, and it's probably too late already in terms of you know, facing this integration of this free society with a totalitarian regime like this. There, I'm just so shocked by the uh, voice of opposing this ban. Uh, that's why I'm so motivated today to speak. I must make it clear that there are people like me, there are political prisoners in China, there are Chinese dissidents like me all over the world who wholeheartedly support this spy and seeing it as the most daring act of a U.S. government against the Great Firewall. Feng Suo, I understand your feeling very well. There's no doubt about it. We came from somewhere, so I really share the feeling. But I will tell you the truth. That's my prediction. Okay. Neither this president or next president will do it. And uh, President Trump, for example, as I said earlier, in the executive order, he did not specify the actions that he will take. Why? Okay, that's the question we have to think of. Number two, what do you mean? What do you mean by completely banning WeChat? If uh, a citizen, John Doe, on the street, uh, ran into police, the police found, find that he's using WeChat. If John Doe will get arrested, put in a prison or not, Tell me, what do you mean by completely ban? Just tell me, technically, legally, tell me what? We get to the real question. I understand your emotion. We are brothers. Yeah. We, I, I witnessed the killing in Tiananmen Square together. So I understand this. We get to the real question. What do you mean by that? You mean the US erect a firewall? If the US does, did, did erect firewall. Do you think this is the country you love? And if U.S. arrest on the street, uh, John Doe, who is using WeChat, you think this is the country you love? Just tell me how practically you can do that. Well, so let me interrupt here for a moment, because I think it is, this is at this point a bit speculative, because we, again, as you say, Chen Li, we don't know what the ban might include. So it is kind of, we can't make the jump that like there would be legislation that would make it. I just uh, want to know what's in people's mind when they talk about yes. a complete ban. Actually, I actually, on that, I think there is uh, some uh, good points in the executive order. You know, in the, there's great room, for example, by targeting carriers like Apple, you know, removing WeChat, for example. Yeah, that, that's good. That I support. You know, that Apple does all the time. You know, for example, recently, they uh, removed this app you know, that had the sons of this uh, uh, European singer who was supporting Hong Kong. You know, simply for this, they removed. So this, they do it routinely. You know, it's, it's no other... Not, nothing different about it. You know, once it's gone, it's gone. So that I support. It, Remove yeah. from uh, from uh, from uh, phones. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I read uh, from the executive order. You know. Yeah. Actually, yeah. yeah actually, so on that, I, I don't see any problem with this ban. And most people, most of America wouldn't even notice that. And the fact, actually, uh, even you know, in United States, Apple is treating WeChat. Uh, as their priority customer, it's just noisy. You know, 
to me. Uh, uh, WeChat is at a prominent position in, 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 in uh, Apple's store now. It's kind of like, you know, promoting semi-official status. This is decided by Apple, uh, which is a US company, uh, and forced into this because of the world firewall, because CCP so tightly controlled WeChat. So that's why in you know, such a bind. In the end, what we hope, of course, is that Google, Twitter, Facebook could go into China and Chinese people could access all these anyway. So and there will be no control. That's, that's it. But to get there, today we have to cut this cancer off. Yeah, so it sounds like really on, on almost everything, you guys really do agree about the threat. You agree that uh, it could be banned from, for example, the apps, the Apple App Store or the Android App Store, uh, and that certain measures do need to be taken. And, you know, Chris, as you pointed out, we will have to wait until September 20th to know specifically what the Trump administration is doing. Um, so... Uh, and with that, I want to say also it's it's really great having both of you on at the same time to just talk about this, because if we were in China, regardless of the issue, really, you couldn't have a debate. There'd only be one point of view. Uh, so it's both an honor for us uh, to have both of you on at the same time uh, willing to you know discuss this. And also it's I think it's it says something great about the environment that we, you know, all of us live in uh, here in the U.S. to be able to have this kind of conversation. That was a very nice point. Thank you. Thank you yes. so much for having both of us. Thank you. Again, as Matt said, it, it was an honor having you both on. Um, we should do this again sometime. It was really, I really enjoyed listening to both of your points. Yeah, sure. Sure. thank you. Well, that definitely got a little a little heated. I I could understand perfectly where they were both coming from. Yeah, I think they both made excellent points. Uh, but yeah, it is it is difficult when you're dealing with an issue like this, how exactly to go about it. Mm. And one thing the Chinese Communist Party is very good at, it's getting people to fight amongst themselves instead of the Communist Party. Well, in fairness, we kind of did that by inviting them both on our show at the same time. But, I had no idea there would be a debate. But but <laughs> no, but I mean, I, I think the difference here is that fundamentally, they do both agree on some of the, the core issues. I mean, Jin Lee called Feng Suo a hero. Yeah. I mean, that that says a lot. Yeah, and I and I think it says a lot that for the most part, everyone was listening to each other and 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 doing this. This, by the way, for for you listeners, is this is the first time we've ever had two guests on debating an issue. So for us also, this was uh, a bit of a test. Well, let us know if you liked this format, actually. I mean, I don't want to turn into CNN. We're not going to have like eight people on <laughs> all yelling at the each other. The Octobox. But uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Maybe eight's too few now. Maybe they have like 16 or well, 32. Well, essentially today was five people. We're pretty close already. Oh my gosh, you're right. Oh no. No, but we weren't debating them. No, well, we can in the future, and we get some. We get two people to stand behind us. That's five right there, and then we get the two more people on there. Yeah, Let us know what you think. We could have a really uh, fun, fun time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And with that, thanks for listening to China Unscripted. Uh, I'll be sure to post a link to uh, Jen Lee's op-ed in the description below. Um, yeah, and again, it was just it really was a great honor for us to have them both on. I think again, I think they made great points each. So thanks again for listening. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. I'm Shelly Jung. And I'm Matt Ganesha. And I'm Churning. See you next time. <laughs> <laughs>